Content warning. Graphic descriptions of internal processes during meltdowns. Please note, this is not the experience of every PDA person. This is a rough transcript from my presentation. The PDA has emotional empathy. Some of us have it in abundance. True, super empaths. The PDA has no shortage of emotional empathy. Right up until the point you say the wrong thing, place one too many demands upon them, or fail to meet a crucial need. At that point, the emotional empathy lifts off of the PDA and scarpers. The fierce inner protector then steps forth and shrinks the kind, charismatic version of the PDA down into an atom and stores them right at the back, away from view. The inner protector then seizes upon your Achilles heel, that which has the power to subdue you if, you if necessary, a word you hate, a bodily insecurity, a cherished item in the house, whatever it is the PDA can effectively use against you in order to subdue you when control has been lost. The PDA is hypervigilant and scans those nearest and dearest to them, ascertaining those chinks in the armour. Upon detection, the PDA cocks and loads the Achilles heel and places it in a holster, ready to use at a moment's notice, should control be taken from them. There is every reason to be wary of people. People are unpredictable and fickle. People are our special interests, but unlike other special interests, people are sentient, conscious and have a mind and life of their own. That scares the PDA, and therefore safety precautions must be observed. Back to the meltdown. From the onset, the inner protector seizes the Achilles heel from the holster, points it towards the triggerer and fires. This is sheer animal panic. Not a trace of the PDA's lighter side remains. The vessel is now running on pure instinct, smouldering rage and a hunger for vengeance. It is important to note that the inner protector has a hostile relationship towards outsiders, you, the demand machines, but is fiercely protective over us, its host. The PDA is a fragile, sensitive and vulnerable being. The world is too harsh and discordant as to basically be inhospitable. Therefore, the inner protector represents the ultimate compensation. As the fury intensifies, so too does the fear of the person on the receiving end. As difficult as this may be to understand, the meltdown is cathartic. It is releasing. It is an exodus of tension. The drive to annihilate part of you is strong. Everything that happens to you during a meltdown feels justified. If you wish to deprive the PDA of their most valued possession and life force, control, then you deserve every bit that's coming to you. Alas, the PDA is not attacking a human being at this point. You cease to resemble anything remotely human, feeling or intrinsically valuable. The inner protector is incapable of experiencing such things. You are, at this point, a quivering mass of hideousness that has come between the PDA and their sense of feeling in control. How dare you? How could you? Now you will pay and suffer the wrath. The whirling nightmare continues right up until the inner protector sees evidence that control has been regained. At this precise moment, the inner protector recoils and recedes back into its lair, and the kind, charismatic and moral PDA returns to the fore whilst the emotional empathy and sense floods back into their vessel like a herd of stampeding buffalo. The PDA returns to a most horrific scene. A loved one is on the floor crying, the house is a tip, and they themselves are cut and bruised and some of their clothing ripped. The PDA has no recollection of the past five minutes, but all they can see is chaos in their wake. Could it really have been I who caused it? Who caused this? The PDA quavers, unable to comprehend nor accept that they could be capable of anything like this. At this point, an inner nightmare of tortuous self-invalidation takes place, rendering further punishment redundant. A meltdown is not a moral failing. It is a survival response, a, physi a physiological response to overwhelm. Nature did not endow us with self-control during the moments at which we feel we are going to die. Our body and our instincts take over at this point.